Hi, I'm Arlen Geyer. Today I want to talk about some things you can do with keywords. So you've invested some time entering some keywords in Adobe Lightroom and this is my list of keywords here and in fact this is my entire set of keywords because I use the Lightroom uh, hierarchical keyword capability so there are keywords within here so for example within building I've got barn church and house uh, within family I've got uh, various events that our family has had and um, within say portrait I've got uh, the names of the people I've done portraits of and so these primary categories are really just uh, the tip of the iceberg and most of my keywords are buried within there so let's say for example we want to look at uh, buildings one of the nice things about hierarchical keywords is I can look at all of the photographs that have um, any of the keywords of barn church or house by looking at the keyword building and I can do that by right by clicking on the arrow to the right side of the keyword building here and now you're seeing all the photographs that have been keyworded with any of these with with building or any of the subsets of building and if I want to look at all the barns I can click on the little arrow to the right of that now one thing you want to be careful about is not to click on the arrow to the left here unless you intend to add that keyword to that photograph so if I click here on this little box I've just added the keyword church to this photograph of a barn which I didn't want to do I can show you that by clicking on keywording up here and you can see that this has barn and church so if I click that check again it goes away and you can see now it's just keyworded with barn so I can look at all of the barns or churches or houses or barns and churches and houses um, when you're working with keywords you want to have your uh, library filter um, present and uh, right now mine is not so press the backslash key which is typically over the enter key on a PC and there we go now I've got my library filter and you can see um, that I've got several options here which I'll explore in just a moment but right now in order to uh, look at all of my photographs again um, I want to click on none up here and now I'll be back to all of my photographs and the one that was selected is um, is currently still selected and visible so this is another place where you can search for these photographs if I click on metadata here it shows a number of categories uh, keyword camera lens and label I can change any one of these for example let's say I want to let me pull this down so you can see what we're looking at here and by the way here you can see my building keywords and I can close that and um, so again I have all of my categories of keywords in here and I can search for them just like I did over on the right I can click uh, building open and I can click on barn and I've got all my barns or churches or houses or all of the above or below in this case so now if I click on none I'm back to everything and back to metadata again I can also in order to go back to everything I can scroll up here and say all and now you can see all the cameras that I've used and how many photographs with each of those cameras all the lenses I've used and how many photographs with each of those and labels and let's say I'm not really interested in labels I want instead to look at I'm going to drop this open here um, all kinds of things you can look at I can look at the cities that these have been taken in if I had happened to enter that um, and this is not keywords this is this is in the metadata um, I can click on keyword there but I've already got it over there I can I've got lens I've got focal length let's see different focal lengths I've used I've used many different focal lengths probably not a very useful category and so you can go through all sorts of different things here um, I can do date for example takes it a moment to populate so lots of different ways you can search uh, right now we're much more interested in keywords so but I want to go here to text oh attribute let's take a quick look at attribute you can search here according to whether it's been flagged 
uh, for picked or rejected. Uh, I tend to use these uh, rating stars a lot, and so I can search for things that have uh, two stars. And I can search for things that have five stars, and there's that's all the photographs in here that have five stars, and um, everything that has two stars, or I can go back to none, but text is a really interesting and quite powerful search capability in here. So let's just take a moment to look at it. So right now it says any searchable field. I can open that up and uh, have a number of options in here. Now I'm going to go to keywords and we'll, so we'll explore this a moment later. For the moment we'll just say contains all and uh, here's some photographs down here of my dog Tigger. Tigger is no longer with us, but his photographs are. So we'll look for everything that contains Tigger. And here are all my photographs of him. So quite a few of them. And let's see. Tigger, um, let's look for all the photographs that contain Tigger and that were taken in the uh, here are a couple of him in the Biltmore Estate over in Asheville. So let's look at Tigger and the Biltmore Estate. So here is Tigger in the Biltmore, and we can see him looking regal at the top of a stairway here. And um, here he is uh, posing in front of a uh, one of these cutout things with Laura uh, in there with her face in the cutout. And so here we have hit Tigger in the Biltmore State. Okay. We can also look for anything that is anything that includes Tigger or the Biltmore State by changing from contain all to contain. And now I've got photographs of the Biltmore State and photographs of Tigger and photographs of Tigger in the Biltmore State. So here are photographs of the Biltmore State. And here are photographs of Tigger, etc. So, uh, if you want to see um, these plus those, you do contain. If you want to see these uh, only where the two are uh, combined, for example, Tigger in the Biltmore Estate, um, then I would do contain all. So I can also restrict it a bit. So I've got some of him in the water here. I can say Tigger in the Biltmore Estate, but without water by an exclamation point means um, not. So Tigger, Biltmore, no water. So here we've got Tigger in the Biltmore Estate with no water. Or we can just say Tigger in the Biltmore Estate with water. There are all the photographs of Tigger in the Biltmore Estate with water. So, enormous capability here. Occasionally, you want to save these kinds of queries, and that's where we go over here to collections. That's where smart collections come in. So, we're going to create a smart collection by clicking on the plus sign next to collections. And when you get a lot of collections, you're going to want to create collection sets in order to organize them kind of the way you would do your folders or the way I've done my keywords. In this case, I'm just going to create a new smart collection. And what I want to do is I'm going to call this Tigger in the Biltmore State Without Water. So. Um, I'm going to click on here and I want to search for keywords. Here we go. And contains Tigger. I'm going to add another one. So contains Biltmore. Add another one. And doesn't contain water. Let's see if that works. What do you know? So we've got built in the tigger, built tigger in the Biltmore without water. And so if I take more photographs, of course, I won't be sadly getting any more photographs of Tigger. But 
um, if I were to get more photographs of Tigger in the Biltmore Estate without water, they would automatically be added to this smart collection because that's the nature of a smart collection. It will pull in any photograph, whether taken before or after I create this set or this collection, anything that meets these criteria. So I could, um, let's say, uh, do it without Tigger. I could just do Biltmore Estate without water and so let's just change this to built more without water and save that. So now this is all my photographs in the Biltmore Estate without water, whether Tigger's in there or not. And if I go back to the Biltmore Estate tomorrow and take some more pictures that don't have any water and of course add the keywords to them, um, add the keyword Biltmore, then those will be added to this smart collection. So couple, three different ways you could uh, play with your keywords. You could uh, filter right over here by clicking on this arrow to the right, or you could drop this um, either the, actually we looked four ways, didn't we? Because we could look at the metadata and search for keywords in here, or we could search for text over here, um, which gave us more flexibility, and we can also use the smart collections over here. So many ways you can play with keywords. I'm going to go back to none here and then go back to my smart collection. And I hope that that helps to explain some of the value of keywords in Lightroom. Thank you. I hope that was useful.